You know, whenever you're scrolling social media and you come across a recipe that you cannot hit save fast enough, that is this recipe for me. I saw this girl make homemade chicken tenders at her house. And if you know me, you know that's my very favorite food in the entire world. And Bunky and I make my mom's version of chicken tenders quite often. It's one of my favorite things as well. Those are a little bit healthier. We're going all out today. We are making like true fried chicken tenders. Mouth is watering. So excited. But if you saw our previous video where we went to Wilmington, I was telling you guys how I went to this restaurant and they had this sauce called mess sauce. And I like took a mental note of all of the ingredients in this sauce. And I told you guys I wanted to try and recreate it at home. So I'm actually gonna recreate that to dip our chicken tenders in. So like Bunky and I are real excited about tonight's dinner. So I have all of our stuff kind of laid out over here. We'll go ahead and get our chicken tenders in our little buttermilk mixture and get them seasoned up because these need to go back in the fridge for about an hour to marinate and then we'll make our mess sauce. So I just got some chicken tenders here that I got in my butcher box order. And I do wanna say a huge thank you to butcher box for sponsoring today's video. I'll tell you more about them in just a little bit. Okay, so first thing that we need to do with these chicken tenders is season them really well. And this is going to be like most of your flavor. We'll also season the flour, but you want to make sure you don't skip out on this part. So to season ours, I'm going to do a little bit of just like regular seasoned salt. And then I'll do a good amount of garlic. And then I'm going to add a little bit of smoked paprika in there and then just some black pepper. If you want to add onion powder, feel free. <laughs> Yes, please. Per Bunky's request, I'll add a little bit of onion powder. As you told us, I'm gonna add a little bit more seasoning so we can make sure everything's like nice and coated. Full coverage. Now, to my perfectly seasoned chicken tenders, I'm gonna add in one whisk egg because this is gonna help the flour mixture adhere to the chicken better. So toss that in. And then I feel like this is what makes them. Just go ahead and cover these with some buttermilk. The tenderization. Buttermilk just makes like fried chicken so much better. And then we're just gonna cover this and pop it in the fridge for about an hour. Okay, three things I wanna tell you. One, we have our friends come over tonight for dinner and they don't like love a lot of spice and they have little kids, but if they were not coming over to have dinner with us, I would totally throw a little bit of cayenne in there, okay? Just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that uh, a little bit of that sweet heat would have been nice. That would have been the really marinade, good too. But we had to we had to nix that. We toned down the heat in there. And then secondly, if y'all remember, this was a couple of months ago. We made those steak fingers, and they were like some of the best thing, like one of the best things we've ever eaten. Mm -hmm. Remember how I told you like oh. that was my favorite? Oh, I couldn't forget. Well, I have been thinking about those so much, and I told Bunky a couple of days ago, I was like, I want to make those steak fingers again, like this week. And then I saw the chicken fingers, and I was like, well, this is kind of the same thing. I wanna try something new. So anyway, that's how this all came to be, but I gotta make this again. And thirdly, we are putting ours in the fridge for about an hour, but if you wanted these to like sit in there for three hours, five hours overnight, you totally can. The longer you let them sit in the fridge, like the more marinated they're gonna be. So don't feel like you can only do an hour, like let them sit if you want to. Funky said he has something funny to tell me. Yes, because now we're about to make the sauce that perfectly describes you, Bunky. Mess sauce? A mess. A hot mess. Okay, so the base of this sauce at the restaurant was mayonnaise and sour cream. And I told you guys I wanted to try and recreate it like a little bit healthier. Now, if I had like Primal Kitchen avocado mayo, I would use that. I don't, so I'm just using regular mayonnaise today. But instead of sour cream, I'm gonna do just like plain Greek yogurt. So I'm gonna start with exactly what that mess sauce had in it, and I'm gonna add just a couple of my own touches to it, okay? <laughs> well, would it be a bunking recipe without having- No, it would not. Changed it up a little bit? Okay, Greek yogurt going in, and I will say, I think I told you guys before, whenever you like doctor up Greek yogurt with like a lot of um, seasonings and stuff, I really feel like you cannot tell the difference between that and sour cream. Oh yeah, I almost prefer Greek yogurt instead of sour cream now. Yeah, okay, we had um, a little bit of an explosion here. <laughs> that, that, must, that mustard bottle was a little pressurized. It was, okay. So to that, we're gonna add in some stone ground mustard, and that's kind of my favorite part of that sauce, so oh, I'm gonna yeah. generously kind of add this in as I make a mess with it. Literally what you just said. Mess sauce. Mess sauce. Now, next ingredient is horseradish. So you can add as little or as much of this as you want to, depending on your like spice level. So I'm gonna go in with just, I don't know, a tablespoon or so. That's good? One more squeeze. 
There it went. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then I have some garlic paste. If you just want to do like minced garlic, fresh garlic, garlic powder, whatever you want, and just put a good amount of garlic in there. Mm. That stuff though, that's gonna like just disappear. Permeate in there. Mm -hmm. Now I think besides like a little salt and pepper, that's all they put in theirs. I wanna do just the tiniest splash of Worcestershire. Give it a little dip. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of dill in here cause I think that flavor combo would be so good. Now I know how much you love baby whisk. <laughs> So I'm gonna let you stir it for us. <laughs> You're playing jokes on me with the baby whisk Bunky, today. you love baby whisk. That looks so good. Oh, this, this stuff right here, I'm telling you, like when we, we got like two extras of this after we had the first one, right? And you had to pay for extra sauce. We were like, we're willing to pay the 75 cent each. Yeah, it's kind of like when it's Axby's, you know, you yeah. gotta, buy, gotta <laughs> buy extra sauce. Mm. What are you thinking? That is good. Does it need something? Is it too much of something? No, it's perfection actually. You really think so? Yeah, you should taste it. I just dipped a little chip in there to try this and it is delicious. You can like kind of taste that horseradish on the back end, which I really like. Yeah. There is a good amount of mustard. I probably could have taken out like a well, teaspoon less mustard. Yeah, like one squeeze. One squeeze. But the flavors in there are so incredible. And I will say, I really like the little addition of dill because I feel like it just kind of brightens it. Mm-hmm. This is delicious. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge so it can kind of marry together before we make our tenders. We'll make those in about an hour. Okay, so while all that is marrying, I wanna to talk to you guys about Butcher Box because I am truly one of their biggest fans. You guys know if you've been around here for a while, we've been getting our Butcher Box subscription for years. And I love it so incredibly much because I'm kind of picky about the meats that we eat. And so often I'll go to the grocery store and none of the meat looks good or they don't have something that I'm looking for. And that just makes me appreciate my Butcher Box subscription so much more. It's so convenient. It's delivered straight to my door. We can customize the box depending on like what cuts of meats that we want, the quantity of how much meat that we want. I can feel good about the meats that we're eating because ButcherBox is so transparent with their sourcing. They only source from farmers and fishermen who meet the highest standards of quality. Y'all, it tastes so much better. I cannot stress to you enough how much better ButcherBox meats taste. And it's because the quality is so incredible. We almost always do the custom box, which means that we get to choose which meats we want in ours. And they have over like 25 plus options to choose from. So no matter if you want steak, chicken, pork, all of the things, you can pick what goes in your box. And with that, it is nine to 14 pounds of meat, which equals out to about 30 mils. And it's $169 per box. So take that, divide it by 30 mils, Meals. It is absolutely incredible, especially for the quality that you're getting. ButcherBox also offers the curated plan box where you choose your meat types and then they pick the specific cuts and you get about eight and a half to 11 pounds of high quality meat. And as always, free shipping and you can cancel anytime. They offer 100% grass fed, grass finished beef, free range organic chicken, pork raised crate free and wild caught seafood. There are no antibiotics or added hormones ever. I love that with my butcher box, it makes meal planning for the week so much easier. I know what I have on hand already and I can plan accordingly. I cannot say enough to the quality and taste that you will notice with butcher box. I'm sure these are about to be the best chicken tenders we've ever had. If you have not tried butcher box, I'm telling you right now, you will love it. There are fewer things I love more than getting an entire box of meat delivered to my doorstep to stock my freezer. So now is the time to do it. When you use my link down below, you can choose between receiving chicken thighs, ground beef or premium steak tips free in every box for an entire year. So I'll have all the information down below for you guys. I cannot even begin to tell you how excited I am, okay? It is time to finally cook the chicken tenders. So I'm gonna go ahead and make our little flour dredge. I have some oil getting hot behind me. It will test it by doing like a little flour sprinkle in the there. The old flour drip, drip. Yes, so to our flour, also gonna add in a little bit of cornstarch. The girl whose recipe I saw, she says that the cornstarch just helps make them like a little bit crispier. Mm -hmm. Whereas flour isn't quite that crispy when you fry it. She did equal parts. I'm not gonna do quite equal parts, but. Yeah, I was a little leery of that. Cause you know, I just don't know what, like if cornstarch puts off flavor, you know what I mean? I wasn't mean? sure about that either. Yeah. But I feel like it does need it, but I just don't wanna do like a whole cup of cornstarch, a whole cup of flour, you oh, know? Oh yeah. And then we just wanna carry the same seasonings throughout. So everything that I season the chicken with, I'm also gonna season 
our flour with. Mm -hmm. So good amount of smoked paprika. I've got my salt and my pepper shaker. <laughs> a little bit of salt in there. Oh yeah. Pepper. She was saying like once you put your seasonings in your flour and mix it up, like basically you want to be able to see the little specks of seasoning in there and that's how you know you've seasoned your flour good enough. Mm -hmm. Adding some garlic in here. You know, pretty decent amount. Since I already added a little bit of salt, I'm not gonna do too much, but I'll do a little bit of seasoned salt. If y'all remember whenever I did my steak fingers, I put a little bit of the buttermilk mixture, marinade, whatever, into my flour because that's oh, what gives you those little- I wanna call them cragglies. I was gonna say kernels. So, yeah. you know what I'm trying to say. It's what makes the chicken tenders have that like extra something on the bread like those ridges and little and that's peaks. my favorite part oh yeah oh my gosh y'all this is like my dream dinner okay <laughs> okay monkey's gonna work our dredging station and we're gonna do flour back and batter flour okay but since your hands are already gonna get dirty go ahead and like stick them in there and do your little bit of buttermilk into your flour like like yeah. so yeah get it a little bit wet trying to keep one can like semi dry you know yeah and then the other one is my because if you don't you end oh up with like a claw you end up with the uh yeah claw fingers <laughs> club club fingers oh i just i just broke my own rule that no. i just said <laughs> Y'all, this is totally random and like side note, but I just ordered this little like candle lamp from Amazon and put it over here and it is my favorite thing. It is so cozy and so cool. And I smell this candle. Like it's as if it was lit, but this is warming it up and you have no flame. It is the coolest thing ever. So I will try and link it below. Okay, back to the chicken tenders. These look so good. Okay, do you want to do our little test to see if this is hot enough? I have the perfect. <laughs> Uh, we can make like little, uh, we have like little hush puppies right here that we can make. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We see, could. Let me see if I can get us a little hush puppy go. All right, we ready? Yeah. We're gonna make a little piece of fried dough bread. Oh my gosh, you are not kidding. Woo, look at that. We have like the perfect temp going. Like when it starts shimmering, that's when you know it's perfection. Mm -hmm. And then these should cook for about five minutes, but you don't want to turn them for at least two. If you turn them too early, the breading can like fall off, so just let them sit for the first two minutes and then we'll flip them. You gotta be patient with that chicken because you get in there too soon, you're losing that, everything that you just worked for, you know what I mean? <laughs> so. Okay, please look at how incredible these look. So we're doing a wire rack so that they can like cool off and not be. You wanna um, get the wire rack going because when you have that direct contact with say a plate on a paper towel, that leads to mushy, undesirable, lack of crunch you want the crust to stay crusty all the way around yes so we're letting them cool in the wire rack but as soon as they come out hit take em. some like flaky sea salt and just hit them on top hit it, hit it, hit it, that is going to be amazing okay next batch going in and by the way we cook these for like five to six minutes See that? This right here? That is money. That. That's like what you want. Mm -hmm. Last little bit of flaky salt going down. I am just like overjoyed with how amazing these turned out. If I went to a restaurant, this is like the exact type of chicken oh. tender I'm looking for. Breading style and everything. Yeah, like uh, I'm not the kind of person who orders chicken tenders at a restaurant. But if they had brought these out to you, I would be reaching onto your plate. Yes. Like these look so good. Like Yum. I'm I'm down to make these anytime. And then dipping them in our in our mess sauce. I forgot about the mess sauce for a minute. Come on now. <laughs> 
Now, just so you guys know, we are having a salad <laughs> with our chicken tenders, but we're gonna wait till our friends get here to put all our toppings on. We gotta go ahead and taste test we're, before they get here. Make sure. Oh, I can taste test it now? Yeah, just okay. on our salad. Okay. Oh my God. Give us a crunch. Let it's, us hear it's it. It's like a little cave of crunchy. Wow, I heard that crunch. I mean, you can like see the batter. Yeah. Around it. These are so good just by itself. You don't even need sauce. <laughs> like no, no dunks necessary. Okay, but try it with our mess sauce. I can't believe you let me go first. I'm shocked at myself. This is so good. It's so good, okay, let me try. You know what would be good in there too though? What? That little bit of cayenne pepper that we mm -hmm. want. Bumpy. Right? The buttermilk made those like so you know when you get a really good piece of fried chicken and it's just so tender? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna tell you something. I said this about the steak fingers too. It's almost like you have this thought in your head of like making chicken tenders or whatever at home is like gonna be hard, but it was actually so incredibly simple. I feel like the, the process that we just went through was so much easier than a lot of meals that we actually make. That is what I'm saying. And if I can make my favorite thing at home and it tastes better than going to the restaurant, mm -hmm. we're saving money and it's probably better like ingredients, honestly, you know, better quality, definitely better quality chicken tenders because we got them from Butcher Box and it tastes better. Like, yeah, we're crazy not to make these at it's home. It's a win all around. Yeah, okay, I gotta try the mess sauce. That little bit of like mustardy, horseradish, mm -hmm. garlic, yeah. I am speechless. I know, but you know what I'm speechless about is the amount of flavor that the actual just chicken tenders have by themselves. Mm -hmm. It's not overpowering, it's just perfect. Y'all, oh, but that was one of the best chicken tenders I've ever had. And with that sauce, it takes it over the top for me. Well, you are basically the chicken tender queen. So if I'm telling you chicken tenders are good, they're really, really good. We're gonna try and save the rest of these so we can share with our friends and have them with our salad. But you guys have got to make these. I'll have the recipe typed out down below and I'll try and type out measurements so that you guys can make mess sauce as well. Also, don't forget to check out Butcher Box down below. I'll have all the information in my description box. I love you so much. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. Give this one a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye y'all.